Gary, it's great to have you with us at SportsEd TV today. Um, let's get right into it with some questions. Um, uh, your father played for Crystal Palace in Ipswich Town. Um, how much of an influence was he on your playing career? No, he was a huge influence, uh, massive. I think as a, a young player, if you, if you have any good coach near you, it gives you a, a, you know, a, real, a real boost to try and make it at the professional level because there's so many technical things, and uh, especially as a goalkeeper. It's a massively technical position. Uh, so to have him as he, he was the national coach of South Africa at one stage, to have him there coaching and telling you, you know, where to stand, how to put your hands, all that, it's, uh, it helps immeasurably. So I think that, you know, it's vital for kids to make sure that they have good quality coaching wherever they are. It's, uh, it's a real help and it certainly helped me on my way. You know, you read the newspapers, which you shouldn't do, and it, it tells you what a garbage goalkeeper you are and how you should head back to where you came from. And, and you try not to internalize that stuff and you try and believe that you can do the job. Um, whereas again today you've got people to turn to I think there's a greater understanding today that psychology is massive that you can you know you can lose young talent by not helping them you can improve young talent by supporting them and getting them through their, their difficult times and um, you know it's if you it's when you make mistakes that, that you need that help the most because it can be very isolating especially as a goalkeeper yeah. as an outfield player and Roy, 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 Roy Wiggs will tell you, you know, you can get away with a, a missed goal, yeah. which he didn't do too often, did occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you're right. And, uh, yeah. you're, right. Uh, you're right in that respect because when a goal gets scored, everybody looks at the goalkeeper, right? I mean, for the most part. So <clears throat> there's help in an outfield position. And you're right, there's, when, when, you, when you're stuck in goal and things go wrong, there's no one there to support you or back you up. So it's, I think it's the toughest position on the field. Definitely. Yeah. So let's especially, talk about especially when you're young. Yeah, especially yeah. when you're young because you 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 know you get blamed. I I was held up against a, a, a wall when I was 20 years of age by our big centre forward Joe Jordan who used to take all his teeth out before a game. Wow. <laughs> so, and we lost the we lost the game and, and I was to blame and he held me up by my throat and said, You're costing me money that I need to feed my kids. Don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, that, that, that'll money. motivate you. Yeah. What's that? I, I say that'll motivate you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully the motivation today is slightly more subtle and, and, and more well thought out. Yeah. Tough early on, it was, um, you know, I think maybe the loss to Arsenal was a good thing because I'd had a, a, a meteoric rise and, and I'd gone from, you know, this reserve team keeper that no one knew to being not only being the first team keeper, but being in a cup final, which back in, in 79 was it's one of the biggest events in, in England, um, in Britain, yeah. and probably the world at the time. So it was massive pressure. Had we have won it, had I made a crucial save or something, I might have got a little bit carried away. Instead, I, I got an absolute whack over the head because the last goal was, you know, was gone down as a, the greatest ending to a cup final. And it was, was great for Arsenal. It wasn't great for us. <laughs> you know, and as a goalkeeper across, I came for it, couldn't get it. I didn't drop it. I didn't, you know, I just didn't get to it get scored at the far post and of course there's only one person everyone looks at. So you you know, you take the, the bad headlines. And that next season was probably one of my best seasons ever. We 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 were finished runners up to Liverpool and we were in with a shot of winning the league up until the last day. So if if anything, sometimes defeat actually serves a, a hell of a good purpose in just grounding you and and making you realise that it's a it's a tough business. It's not a yeah. it looks glamorous to everybody on the outside, but you're you're fighting, you know, tooth and nail every week to keep your position from somebody else behind you who wants it. Right. Um and you just gotta to toughen up and you've got to accept that, that competition is there, that you can be dropped, that you can be injured, you yeah. can go through a bad patch, all those things happen and you've got to deal with it. And uh, people aren't interested in excuses. It doesn't matter how you feel or what went wrong or whether you didn't sleep well last night. Nobody cares. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to produce. So it, it did toughen me up. Not, not in a nice way, but in a necessary way. Yeah. And the Would thing that I found uh, Gary too playing is, is there's no support system. Like you just said, when you're yeah. over there, you're on, your, you're on your own. You don't have family. Well, I didn't have family in England. You didn't have too many. You didn't have family either. And there's no internet or, you know, t you know, phones like we have now to, to be in touch with people. I mean, I was lucky if I spoke to my folks maybe once or twice a month. Mm. When, and when things go wrong, you have no brothers or sisters or family around. You're on your own, like you yeah. say. And you've got people in the team trying to, well, in my position as an outfielder, own players in your team trying to break your leg to get you out of the team so they can play in practice. 
and that's yeah. how it was back then. You know, there was yeah. none of this uh, coddling or anything. So it was a, it's a, it was a tough environment. So I, I relate exactly to what you're saying. Yeah, no, it was the same. One one phone call a month I managed to get. Right. Just sneak into Old Trafford and the secretary would let me use the phone. Okay. <laughs> and you'd phone home. And the last thing you want to do is moan to your parents about how hard tough it is. Going. You want to tell them the good stuff. In fact, I think Roy, Roy mentioned a, a good point. When, when you come from a different country and you succeed as a kid, I think it's, it's an even greater achievement. And not just because Roy and I did it, but I mean, I'd look at any, any kid. I look at one of the top South African players, Lucas Khadebi, and he went to captain Leeds. And when you go from a culture that is, that is totally different, and I had a European-based culture, so I was, I was lucky. But when you've got an African-based culture, for example, or South American or Asian, and you, you come into England, yeah. um, it's, it's not just the football, it's... It's the, the, I mean, I'll give you one uh, good example, the sense of humor. Right. Um, they've got a great, the best sense of humor in the world is the, is the English. No, I mean, it's just a giggle. But if you don't know that and you come from a serious background, I mean, I'll give you an example. On my debut, we went 2-0 against Ipswich Town. Uh, BBC were the only people covering the game and the entire country watches. And I get, you know, manager comes to me and says, BBC, want to interview you. So I'm like, okay, this is awesome. <clears throat> he said, don't forget, you know, say the right things, do the right things. The country's watching, no pressure. So I rush off, I get my suit, hit it on. I get my tie to put it on. And the lads have cut half my tie off. It, it, it ended there. There's my tie went to there. <laughs> and I'm like really annoyed now because this is unfair and they're falling over laughing. So I had to do my suit up like this and go on air with my suit done up. And everyone's like, he looks a bit weird. What's up with him? And and it takes a while for you to actually understand it's all you part of the, yeah. of the culture. It took me two, three years of being really stuck up and annoyed and angry with them and fed up until eventually I started to be a prankster because I understood it. That's the cultural stuff that if a kid goes from the USA to play in England, it's, it's, not, it's not simple. There's a lot of mm. cultural things they need to understand. And that's why, you know, Timmy Howard and all those sort of players who came from the US or the likes of Roy and myself from South Africa. So there's an extra dimension that you have to, you have to deal with. 